Well, today, what I'm going to do with Linda is wire in an LED light that will turn on whenever the fans for the electric cooling turn on. Visible by the driver at the rear of the hood of the vehicle. And the idea is to allow us to tell visually when the cooling fans have turned on and when they're not turned on. And I'm going to do this by simply attaching to an existing electric fan system. It feels like it should be fairly easy to do. Of course, the devil's in the details, we'll see. So the first thing I need to do is determine which circuits are alive and when. Here we've got the relay being used to turn the fans on when a trigger voltage gets set. This is the relay, I'm unplugging it. And here's the socket. And there are four wires that feed into the socket. Yellow, red, or heavy 12 gauge wires. Then we have our gray, black, and orange, maybe 14 or 16 gauge, much lighter, uh, smaller wires. Okay. The smaller orange wire is the trigger voltage that causes the relay to close the circuit between the red wire current and the yellow wire, which feeds the fans. What triggers the voltage to come through the small orange wire is a variable rheostat that is using a capillary tube that goes through the radiator support into the radiator and inside the upper hose is a thermocouple device when the temperature hits a certain level based upon where this dial is set that thermocouple will cause this rheostat unit to trigger and as soon as the temperature hits whatever temp I'm telling it to activate with this dial it, that's what sends the voltage to this small orange wire that then triggers this relay to close the circuit and turn the fans on. Now all that's important so I know which of these wires to tap into to send voltage to the LED lights. Let me demonstrate. I will plug in the relay or I'll attempt to see if I can get the right one here. Yeah, that's the right one. There we go. Now at this point, nothing is turned on. If I check the voltage at the trigger wire, that's a small orange one going into the relay, I will see there's no voltage, but when I change the temperature to activate that trigger, fans the fans came on. And I'm getting voltage now. I set the temperature up higher than the inside temperature of the garage and the fans turned off. What I want to show now is that the heavy red wire has a constant 12 volts going to it. The yellow wire 
I used the other probe for this one. Because it's going to be harder to hit. Has no voltage going to it currently, but now it does. So that tells me that it has occurred from the big yellow wire that I want to use to trigger the LED lights. Now the yellow wire comes through a plastic conduit back here and I have it running into the two red wires each of which go to the two cooling fans. So I will test this next. There we go. So either these two red wires would be a good place for me to tap into for the LED circuit. Okay. Now the good news is that this cooling fan system has been working for the better part of the past half year or more. So for me to tap into the fan circuit should be fairly easy, except the bad news is that a lot of the wiring I put in place has this protective sheath or plastic conduit around it to keep the wires insulation from chafing against metal parts in the car that could later cause a short circuit to ground. So what makes that bad news is for today, where I need to run the wire for the LED lights is along the same route that I am running the wire for the trigger voltage, which is switched electrical voltage. So I need to go along all this conduit and wherever I have conduit, I need to open it up and put the new wire in there that's gonna be used to feed the LED light. Now that doesn't sound like a big deal, but that's because I'm the one that's been bending over doing it, cutting what I had wrapped up so nicely before, never think I'm gonna need to do something like this. That's okay. It's worthwhile. I find myself in both of these two 73 Mustangs wondering, is the cooling fan turned on as I'm driving the vehicles? Yesterday, Linda and I did the LED light installation in the Mach 1. Turned out great. I did that to practice before I decided to videotape it being done on this car so I could get any boneheaded errors or things that slow me down out of the way. So you get to see the new and improved process. It actually went pretty good with the Mach 1. We didn't run into anything unusual. What I'm going to do, and I'll do it off camera, is I'm going to go along this conduit and start to clip it in the places I need to to free it up so I can start running the wire. And it's gonna run from way over here to way in the driver's side rear part of the hood near where the new LED light is going to be located. And then I'll demonstrate how the LED light operates before I put it into place. Okay, off camera for a few minutes. So I thought I'd go ahead and bring in another video with a short clip on where I am at so far in preparing the system for the new wiring. I found the conduit that leads from up front all the way into the back where our source trigger voltage is coming from, which is the windshield washer switched power circuit. I identified earlier which wire was being used to power the two fans. So I got a small lock, um, a splice lock, and I have 
spliced in this new yellow wire with the old yellow wire. The new one is a lighter gauge because it's not going to carry very much current. So now I wanted to test to make sure when the fans come on, I get current at the other end of the wire I'll be using to power the LED lights. So right now, I hit my test light and nothing is on. I will change the threshold setting for the thermostat for the fans. They're on, so now I should get current here. And I do. So I'm on a good start. I'm going to start threading this through the conduit all the way back there. Once it's back there, I'll connect the LED light, one end of the LED circuit to this wire. The other has to go to ground, a good ground. And then we'll test it before I install the LED light. So that's where we are. Okay, we finally finished with all the wiring for the power wire to the LED status light for the electro fans coming on and the ground circuit. I used conduit to protect the wires. There is fusing, inline fusing. More conduit over here, underneath this brace, and back toward the windshield washer motor area. Back in the windshield washer motor area is where we picked up the switched electrical circuit for the power. I also ran a ground wire back there because it was convenient. Now you see some exposed wire, yellow and green and some blue spade connectors. That I will be covering up with some conduit. I guess some large conduit for that, but that will not adversely impact how this thing is working. Now Linda is gonna go ahead and turn the ignition key to the run position. Okay, this is what we're looking at. When I'm in the driver's seat, the fans are running and see the illuminated light right there? That was the whole game plan to be able to see that. 